Hi, and welcome back to the AI Aggregator Model Shootout, where we're reviewing 11 aggregator AI tools that bring together a host of different AI apps under one simple subscription. Today, we're talking about one of the more unique players in the group, and it's called Ruby.ai. That's R-U-B-I dot AI. You may be going, Jonathan, what makes it unique? Why is it different? Well, like all of the other models, it has multiple different AI tools that you can utilize. It does text, it does images, it does music, it does a lot. Probably does more than most, but the really unique factor about it is, is Ruby is set up on a network marketing or multi-level marketing model to allow you to also make money by recruiting others to use Ruby.ai. It's a unique concept, and let's dive in and take a look and see, does the software hold up? Let's dive right into the interface and take a look at how Ruby.ai works so that you can get an example. Uh, very easy to use, very similar methodology to most or user experience. You've got your message or your menu over here on the left-hand side, easy, to use layout. Um, not quite sure about the picture, what value it adds, but that's okay. It doesn't really hurt. As you get started, it's, it's great. They do give you a getting started guide to make it easy, including videos, how you can make your content creation more personalized by using their personify feature, uh, how you can use SPI in Ghost, and these are different aspects that help basically microservices uh, to help make sure your content may fly under the AI radar. If you know me, I don't really buy into the AI detection software stuff, but we're going to take a look at those. And then they also give us an AI studio tour that where, where you can learn how to create visuals and music and things like that. So um, a good job that Ruby does bringing you on board and helping you get things figured out. And that's good. Let's take a look over at the menu and see what they've got. So our big menu here is the canvas and we can create without boundaries. Um, not necessarily related to ChatGPT Canvas, but we can create new projects here. We can use existing projects. Let's go create a new one, and I can go ahead and set that up. Not really sure what Canvas does at the moment. We'll do some uh, research to find that out, but it doesn't make that perfectly clear. Let's go into IntelliChat. And you can see here we get to choose the model that we want. So we can choose from the drop-down, GTP minis, 4.0, uh, some Cohere commands. That's great. Opus, Claude, um, Gemini, others. So overall, a pretty good selection of models. They are missing Llama and uh, a few of the possible others like Mistral. But they've got the major models here and they've added Cohere, which is I think is a really good thing. A lot of times people are not doing that. One of the really cool things I think they've done though is on the 4 Mini and on the Claude Instant features, both of them offer, as we'll do a couple of others here, the Haiku, the Gemini Pro, those all offer unlimited usage. So one of the downsides to any aggregator model is the fact that when you're pulling these multiple models together you're working off of a credit system you can see up in the top here i've got so many words set up and credits and all that and while that lasts a long time if you're a power user you can absolutely run out of those credits and i like the fact a lot here that ruby has given us multiple models it's given us unlimited use and that to me is really awesome i'm going to go ahead and pick on the 3.5 sonnet it's one of my favorite models We'll go ahead and pick that. And then I get to select a module as well. And modules are something that's kind of unique to Ruby. Um, you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, you're probably not gonna love it. But if you're looking for help, this is really cool. You can, based on your model, I can choose all of these different modules that are expertly crafted. Think of them as blueprints for AI success that'll help guide you through your experience. These are pre-built tools for a bunch of different tasks. So if I want a three-month marketing plan, I just need to click on that. If I want to use a money advisor, I click here. If I want to use the AIDA marketing framework or a biz plan, you can see there's lots and lots of options here that I can put in place lots of them and they're continuing to add so overall i think this is a good thing i like to do a lot on my own but you know it's pretty good to be able to have that let's go ahead and let's say we want to do um well, let's see here let's do a video script so we've got youtube video description youtube tutorial video script generator so let's click on that and this is where these get really cool these intellichat modules give you the ability one you can heart the ones that you like so as you start playing with them you can use that but now I can go ahead and I can define my topic so if I want to define a topic here for AI prompting I can do that define the goal teach the basics of AI prompting 
and I can scroll down and generate and it's now going to generate a script for me and it's going to use what's cool is it's using Claude 3.5 which is the model that I've picked I could pick others and you can see here it's generating nice and quickly uh, very fast interface overall for this I'm impressed with the speed uh, and here let's see how this is so this is AI prompting mastering the art of crafting effective prompts Hello and welcome to this comprehensive tutorial on AI prompting. I'm Jonathan, an AI specialist with years of experience in prompt engineering. I won't read the whole thing, but it looks pretty good. And definitely, if you're looking to do video scripts or something like that, um, that's a great way to do it. And again, the IntelliChat's nice because you've got lots of different modules that you can choose from, and I like that. So you've this is just, uh, again, all of them that are out here, we can click into those for education, those that are for business, those that are featured, um, really cool stuff, health and fitness. If I can click on that, there we go. And so a good setup, I like this. This is a unique feature to Ruby and I like it. Next, let's go to Personify. And Personify is great in that this allows you to create different personas to write your content. So uh, if you're familiar with my Selfscribe program or my Brandscribe, you can use those same type of tools here inside of Ruby to create based upon text that I can describe, based on searching your website or your LinkedIn profile, or even searching a social media profile to create your style, your persona. And I think that's really cool because you can then use that in different areas. Again, something fairly similar to what a lot of others has, but they've done a nice job of laying this out. Let's go down the menu. So next we can take a look at their SPI audit. This stands for their surveillance and plagiarism identifier. Now it's always good to be checking your items for plagiarism. It's a general rule. I don't anticipate you're going to have many problems with any AI model there, but it's nice to have that in here. And I think that's really cool. Ghost is basically your opportunity to determine is your content going to be identified as AI generated or not. And it'll give you that opportunity to, to put that in there. Um, let's see here. The, let's see, Increasing the number of rewrites directly impacts readability because Ghost has to make more inventive changes to keep the content unique. So basically Ghost is going to rewrite your content and create different versions of it for you. Um, something unique, again, I don't know where that would fit into my workflow, but if you're looking to, again, create different versions of content, that can be super helpful. Prompts. So prompts, we can create new prompts in here, and we can save these. We can even save the model we want and details, and this is really cool. So if you've got prompts you're using on a regular basis, you can come in here and you can name them. You can pick your preferred chat model that you want to do that. Let's go ahead and pick the mini since we can use that. We can select a project if we've assigned it to a project, and then we can paste that prompt in here and then make that available in our prompt library. You saw that others' models have had very similar things available in their prompt library, and that's super cool to have that available. One of my favorite parts is their virtual studio. So if we go into their virtual studio here on Ruby, Ruby's added some really great stuff. So like most of the tools, they've got an image hub. And we can come in here in the image and we can use Midjourney. We can use Dolly 3, Leonardo, Stable Diffusion, uh, some really good stuff. I am a big fan of Midjourney, so I love the fact that they have that. That's not as normal. Uh, and so they've got that. I can choose different pre-styles. Let's say I want to do a cartoon illustration. You guys know that I love that. Let's go ahead and type in 3D cartoon animation of a squirrel in a parking meter attendant outfit inspired by Pixar. Let's move my big mug out of the way. There we go. I can pick my aspect ratio of what I want to have it at. Let's go ahead four by five. And I get to choose relaxed or turbo model. And we're going to use more credits in turbo, but that's all right. It'll be faster. Here we go. And it's going to go ahead and do this now in mid journey and create the image. Now you can see it's taking a second, but mid journey does take a second. So the delay here probably has nothing to do with Ruby. In fact, if I was running this in mid journey, I would expect it to take about the same length. We'll go ahead and pause this while we're waiting though, just a moment. So you don't have to pause and watch Watch while Mid Journey is creating this image. All right, so I'm not going to lie, this is taking a bit longer than I anticipated, but they've added a neat feature up here, and that's that they've let us know that while that image is generating, we can continue to do other things in the back while this works in the background. So I like that. I'm not quite sure why it's taking as long as it is. My guess I'm going to give part of the blame to Mid Journey and their API, um, but 
you know, it is what it is. So we're going to wait on that. The great news is, again, we can do other things while it's happening. So let's go ahead and go over to the voice tab. We can take a look. And this is really cool. This is something that's quite unique within Ruby. We'll look at the other 11 models, but I don't know that any of the others are doing this right now. We'll see as we go through. And that's the text to speech to give us the ability to actually type in text and have speech or voice come out. And we can actually even create our own voices here. And that is really cool. You may be familiar with tools like 11 Labs and that, and that may be what is, excuse me, that may be what's being used in the background. I don't know exactly, but a really cool feature to be able to create multiple voices and be able to type text and have that voices come out. So that's great. They also have a voice library here. You can see lots of choices here that we can do um, and you can check around to figure out what you want. I also love that they kind of tell you what to expect. So if I look here at Andrea, it's a confident, informative, educational voice, um, young Italian male with a perfect voice for narrations. And you can even click on sample. That's through, no, we won't through my, what I've got, but it plays sample so you can see exactly what's there. And that is really cool. We've then got the video lab. So in addition to being able to do images and voice, we can create AI videos. We can upload images and have them animated. Super cool there. And one really neat feature, which is Ruby Music. The ability to go ahead and use AI to create music for your backgrounds, for your listening. I can even do instrumental or vocals up here. Super, super cool. I can pick the genre that I want. I can pick the collections if I want, where it might be fitting. Uh, I can hit create looped music, which is really cool. Uh, global tracks, and then of course I have my library when I'm done where it has all of my tracks there so that I can use those anytime I want. And then we have the projects manager, and this is a great feature because we have the ability to organize what we're doing in AI and projects. And this is especially great if you're maybe working with clients or on different things you want to keep separate. We have the ability to go over into projects here and make all of that work smoothly. You can see we come in here, it's as easy as clicking on create a new project. We can give it a name, a description, and even an image if we want. And then we can put different prompts aspects, assets we've created and all that into those projects. And it's as easy to do as just by dealing with your workspace and your projects right here at the top. So again, overall, I'm super impressed with what I'm seeing here in Ruby AI. I need to, in full disclosure, let you know that when I first saw Ruby AI, boy, it's probably six months ago, I wasn't so impressed. Their team has really done an amazing job of improving this product and making it one that's good. In fact, originally they'd asked me to represent it and I said, guys, I'm not comfortable enough to do that. I can tell you as of October 8th here in 2024, as I'm recording this, I'm comfortable enough with it that not only am I doing the review on it, but I've signed up as a distributor as well. Why? Well, you know what? I love the aspect of being able to make some extra money by promoting the product. And so I'm doing that here. If you're interested in signing up for Ruby, I'd love to have you join my team. It's totally up to you, though. That's not why I'm doing the review. Uh, the review is coming because it's one of these 11 models. You're going to see as we do the scoring next, it ranks well in some areas and eh, not quite as well in others. But overall, I think it's still a really solid choice. So let's move on and take a look at the scoring as we take a look at that. All right, so let's pop into the scoring and see how did Ruby do and how's it stack up. Let's take a look. This is our second video, so we our second test. We have done Magi. Here's Ruby. I'm going to take a look. So account setup. Overall, I got to say, setting up an account was very easy. I did downgrade them though a point because there's a little bit of confusion as you set up between whether you're setting it up for use or you're setting it up to be a reseller, or at least I had some issues with that. Maybe it was just me, but I'm downgrading them in a point there. Was it hard? No, but I think the process could be improved a bit. And I've shared that with Ruby and the developers and they've indicated they're gonna do that. But for right now, I'm gonna give them a seven when it comes to that. User interface, a nine. I found it very easy to use, very intuitive, easy to navigate, easy to get around on, uh, works well across the board. Uh, AI models that are available, I think they're doing a great job of the models they've got. They've got the ones that are needed. And I love the fact, I think, and this probably fits into value more than anything else, but, you know, in fact, I should give it a nine for value because this is a really big deal. I love the fact that there's multiple models that you get unlimited use for. That's not the case in a lot of these aggregator models. And I love the fact that Ruby's done that. 
Um, so cost effective, I bumped them a point to nine because of that as well. Multiple plans, different uses, uh, good value overall. Performance and speed, you saw overall when I was doing the, the chat GPT and the Claude stuff, everything came through well. A little bit of delay on the mid journey, but you know what? I'm not going to hold that against it. I think that's a mid journey issue, um, but we're not going to give them a 10 either because it's not, not stellar as we take a look at that. So overall, I'm going to give them an eight. Integration capabilities. Now, they don't do API integration, so that is a downside. Um, they do have some great other features, though, by the way. And I love the IntelliChat. I love the, the studio, um, the virtual studio, the music studio, the voice studio. Uh, really a very wide variety of issues overall or of capabilities overall. So I think they've done a, a good job there. Uh, even though they're not using API integrations, I don't see that as a problem unless that's what you want. Again, that's a more advanced feature. Training and customization. So here I gave them a nine. I think they've done a great job. Again, I love all the different models that are available. I love the different custom training we can do, uh, especially on the voice and, and all that. I think that's amazing. The personas you can set up, I think that's all very, very good. They're training. They've got videos to walk you through. Obviously, there's always room for improvement, but I think they've done a very good job. Output quality, accuracy of responses. Again, I think everything came out as I would have expected it to do if I were using any of the other models, and that's the best thing I can do from an accuracy perspective. Was it relevant to the prompt? Yes, it was. Um, Ruby, again, is more of an interface using the other tools, and I think it did great there, as have the others so far. Data security and privacy, as far as I can tell, everything's really good, uh, so I didn't mark it up or down from there. Customer support. Overall, it's been good. I'll admit, I've had a few login issues. I mentioned, especially getting started, uh, I had originally tried this product out back, I believe it was in May, and when I canceled my account, didn't like it, started up again about a month ago, uh, we had a couple issues, but their customer support was great. I was able to message them. They were able to get it taken care of cleanly and, and easily, and I give them a lot of credit for that. So that, I gave them a nine for great. Again, overall, the, the guides I thought did a great job, so we've got an eight there. And because they have the ability to do lots of different plans that are available, uh, I went ahead and gave them a nine in scalability for a total score of 95, which gives us a 79.17% of all possible that they could get. Again, overall, an excellent score, keeping in mind that the API drops them down 10 points as it does with many, and that makes that percentage look a little bit lower. A very solid choice. Um, Ruby, congratulations on some significant improvements that you've made since May. When I first looked at your product, I admit I was not impressed, but you guys have made some great changes to it. I am impressed, and I'm proud to say that I'm now actually referring and representing Ruby in your multi-level marketing plan to be it and we call it an influencer, I believe is what you're calling it, to allow me to actually earn extra money by signing up people to use Ruby as well. Again, a solid product. The only one to choose? No, not at all. But a very solid product, especially if you've got an entrepreneurial bent and you're looking for ways to maybe make some money with AI. It's a great tool that allows you to, for as little as about $20 a month, get your family, your friends, coworkers, people that you know involved, give them access to multiple different models at a great value, and make a little money yourself as well.